So this setup is prepared for a high school example of a lesson that I would teach probably to any of the grade levels, but it would be a beginning clay piece. So this might be the first thing you would do in a unit after showing students how to do the techniques of coiling and forming a slab and pinching. As you can see, if you watched my previous videos, education for educators on forming the coils and the slabs, I had my previously set out work to use for this cup. And so the reason I prefer to do a cup lesson before an easier bowl lesson is because it challenges students to build taller. From my first pinching video, you'll know that when you pinch correctly, the clay becomes taller instead of wider, which is very important to forming a cup, but it's also going to strengthen their technique for when they do decide to make a bowl or a sculpture. And so personally, when I hand build a cup, I will use a slab first. Now, you could just cut off a piece from your clay, pound it out pretty thick and cut it or form it into a circle, but I prefer just to use the slab and my knife and I'll decide the shape of my cup in advance. And so I will cut a circle. Your cup doesn't have to be a circle, but when using coils, it is easy to follow this shape. So I'll take up the rest of the clay. I might fold it and spray it with water and put it back under my bag. And so here is my little circle. You can always hit it on the side, make it more round, flip it over, you can still pound it. When your students cut out the base of their cup, if it hasn't been a pre-pounded slab and they just cut it off of the hump of clay or get it out of the trash bin, you wanna make sure they use the thick part of their hand and hit it down. If not, this clay will get air pockets and the air pockets will expand when firing and explode. Forming a cup is a type of clay making that is functional wear. Functional wear is great, especially with high school students, if you have a kiln to fire in, because you can talk about issues of air, air pockets and explosion, questions of thickness of your base and thinness of your walls. However, if you don't plan to fire the work, I wouldn't suggest doing functional wear because you don't address those questions as well. So this is my base, it's not perfect, but I'll smooth it out a lot. I'll begin with one coil. Now, if my clay has become dry, or if I wanna be extra certain, I can take a needle tool really quickly and score the edges. But with the clay, my clay specifically being pretty damp or moist, I don't think I would need to do that right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push down. You can see the ridge right here. So some people might start instead of on top of the clay, over the edge of the clay, especially with the first one. And I will bring this coil around as I go. Now, the first coil might not reach, that's okay, I've got more. So what I've got now is one coil around the edge that's overlapping, which is important for this first one because it's gonna increase the strength of your base coil, which will in turn increase the strength of the structure. And so I'll begin with my two fingers in the L shape, as I said in the first video, massaging the shoulders of a baby squirrel. You're gonna take your fingers, doesn't matter at which point you enter, and you're going to move your fingers out and in towards one another. And you can see already this section is getting taller. So you could pinch all the way around first, or you could go through and smooth the coil onto the base first. Sometimes once you get taller, it's easier to smooth the inside before you add any height. On the first one, it doesn't make a difference. So whichever you prefer, I like to get my inside smooth before I add too much height with the pinching, but it's up to you. And so I will go around and I will pinch, moving my fingers towards each other so that I can get the height, the height that we want on a cup so that we can develop the technique of being able to build taller instead of simply building wider. So this can go pretty quickly as you can see, it's starting to stick. And so your students might begin making their cup on their plaster board, but what I like to do is begin making my cup on a banding wheel. So we haven't talked about or used this yet, but it is a non-electric version of a potter's wheel that you can spin at your own pace. And so I'm going to finish my cup on this so that I can better show you how I'm completing it. So I'm pinching 
the sides up. Trying to keep an even thickness around, you'll be able to feel when part of the wall is thinner than the next. And then I'll go back in and I will smooth. So right now the inside of my cup is looking pretty good. I'm smoothing out the walls. I'm putting more pressure onto the base, which will get rid of any potential air pockets. But you'll notice the outside still has that line. So another way that you can do this is by scoring that as you go or waiting till the end. So I would definitely use my needle tool again or a felting knife, which I have closer, and I will score it as I go. You may have seen coil pots or coil cups before that leave the coil texture. I don't personally prefer that technique and so I will, <coughs> excuse me, score the edges and then use a smoothing tool or a scraping tool and make them smoother. But I'm going to wait to do this until the end. So then next I'll show you one more coil before speeding up the video. This coil got a little dry, but it should still work. I'll take it and you can enter it at any point, but I tried to enter this next coil at the point of my cup that is the thinnest. So I'm thinking that's right about here. And I'll press it, not necessarily pinch, just press it into the inside of the previous coil. And I will begin again, pinching together. After I pinch it together and the height's okay, I'll go back inside and I will smooth it out. If you zoom in closer, you can see that the inside of my cup is beginning to smooth. You can also see where the ridge is where I haven't quite smoothed it yet. I also like to keep my left hand on the outside of this cup because if not the pressure from my thumb smoothing it can cause it to bulge you can already see where it's kind of getting a little wider and so i might come and now address both coils and pinch them upward to kind of remove that and so at this point i'm going to again score where i added the second layer and then the process will continue At this point, I would probably add two to three more coils and I can show you that. But I've got another pre-prepared cup that I'm going to use to show you how to trim. So before I do that, I'll show you how to address this cup 